got to find the flip button. Yeah, and throw it. Yeah, throw it. There we go. Oh, mama pajama. So these were made for the Harley Davidson run in 94. That Strat Fender made 150 of them or something. Uh -huh. It was their 90th anniversary at Harley or something like that. Who, who made those? I think Harley made these. Oh, the the motorcycle company actually made the the strap bodies. So are they milled or are they are they welded or? These are welded on the seam, one seam around the side. Uh huh. You can't you cannot see it. Oh my God. It's, it's uh threaded for a two point tremolo. What's that architecture inside? Is there wood in there or is it all metal? It's all metal. What what does it all weigh? Aluminum. It's, it's killer welding. Yeah. What does it weigh? I haven't weighed it yet. It's, uh, oh, I guess it probably weighs four pounds. Okay. Can't say, but I'm going to put, I've got a bunch of necks I made some years back that I've never used. They're, a lot of them are in rough, you know, just got truss rods cut and they haven't been rounded or shaped. Uh huh. This was one that I like. It's, it's made out of this really beautiful piece of spalted maple I got from the Amish. Oh, yeah. And I've made some necks out of it, and when it gets lacquered, it kind of looks like blue cheese. Well, it has the strange colors, but so I plugged the strip, I plugged the peg head that I'd already drilled, uh -huh. and installed these banjo tuners. I took them off of my Kalamazoo. Uh huh. These, I think it's a cool look. It's very cool. It looks so, so look cool. At, look see at the fender yeah, peg look. head from the front. When you don't see any tuning pegs coming out, it's just like really yeah, cool. It, it's pretty cool. I'm going to put aluminum on the face of the peg head and polished. And this one will have a black stinger on the back to hide the plugs. Mm -hmm. Hey, have you taken those tuners apart to see how they work? Or are they, are, can you, is it possible to take them apart or are they completely sealed? I've got um, pictures of it or a movie of it, but that Frank sent me quite a while back. Yeah. It's called cycloidal gears. Cycloidal. I'll have to look that up. They're killer. These are the best tuners I have ever used. If guys uh, like you and me were interested in being the being known as the experts, we'd spend all our time on guitar forums. I hate those things. <laughs> About tw twelve years ago or something, I spent some time on the Les Paul guitar forum. It was yeah. nice people, and I had my own little corner called Dan's Guitar Shop. I remember but I that, yeah. I couldn't keep up with it. It was just too much, and then you get involved with it. Egos, and just, uh, I quit. I remember, like, I, I was kind of hesitant to go on there and, like, any of the forums, and, like, the first time I opened a forum, it was this thread of a kid who had made the claim that he could, uh, uh, put solder in divots on frets instead of refretting. He would just oh, flow come solder into it, come and, on. and that and that thread went like by the end of it, like people were, uh, like somebody had gone to had uh, gotten a degree in metallurgy or something like that, and he was listing his credentials in order to explain, you know, like why his his knowledge of whether or not you could put solder in fret divots was uh, superior to anybody else's. It was just like, oh my god, what a waste of time. No, nope, I think uh, you could probably heliarch them or something in place. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it you think. Work too nice. Yeah, I would think you would uh, run the risk of just cooking them right out of the uh, fret slot, but. Oh yes, you would. You know, like uh, even silver solder. Like I can't imagine silver soldering a fret either. Like I think you just no. you'd, you'd melt it up. But uh, it seems like a it seems like a hard way to go to avoid a fret job anyway. So. I, I want to start doing uh, tool reviews on my uh, on my website, so you should talk to them about a, a tool review. Like I said when we were talking about Howard's uh, uh, vice, uh, I'm not looking to like bag on anything or or anything, but uh, I think I could do like kind of a real evaluation for guitar guys. And I don't think anybody's doing it, you know. I don't. See I don't think so. I think I think it might be nice, but. All right, Dan. Well, I'm going to let you get back to work. Thanks for showing me that, that strap neck, man. That's cool. 
be fun. The total rice guy, um, yeah, you. I know you wouldn't say anything to to hurt any of his sales. No, no, I I just say what I you know like like what you and I were saying, what we what we'd change, you know like I think you know like if he if he's uh, letting me hang on to this like I can just put a, a bolt in there and and have that be the hold down. No, you you're hanging on to it. He wants you to use it. He wants. I mean, it it might be two months from now that you have a chance to really start customize it like I'm doing. And I'm just going to keep on feeding them, and he'll the next thing you know, he'll have a new lever with a swivel handle on it, and whatever we say, he'll he'll put it into it. Do you know um, John Walker that used to work for Gibson? That I'm not familiar with John. John was, uh, you know, Ren Ferguson. I I know that name. Yeah, I never met him, but yeah. John worked under and with Ren Ferguson when they started Gibson Montana. He was there for years and fine guitar maker and he has ever since he's been gone from gibson he's been making jumbo guitars he makes killer j35 oh and he's kind of known for that and he has i haven't i'm going to give him a call i haven't talked to him in a long time he's got this stuff set up in his shop and he loves it it's just changed his operation because all these different devices are set up for jobs and you hang them on the wall bring it over plop it in do it and that sounds pretty cool. Sometime today, I'm going to get this piece of track, or Tuesday maybe, that bolts to the, that you'll see that next. I'm not getting any work done either because I'm fucking around with this stuff all the time. Well, I think that counts as work. If you're involved in, like, somebody's prototyping and you're getting, you're in the mix, I think that counts as work. But well, you, John's you're... working with him. John Walker is going back and forth with him, and that's a good thing. I was surprised when I heard that that's, He's a smart, got really smart guy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, today I'm going to make my little crimp shape. So I just want to get this shape. Yeah. To hold the neck of that. I'm going to carve it right into the wood, just you, so I can hold it without tipping. Can you can you send me a picture of that when you get that when you get I that will. done? Awesome. I got it. It's all in pieces right now. Like. Uh, Whoops. You can't see that. Now you gotta flip the, flip the camera again. And then it went, yep, there we go. All right, let's try this again. It's the buttons on the iPhone that I hit by mistake. Yeah, it happens. Now, am I flipped now? Yep, you're looking good. So I'm gonna cut a, a groove close to the top so I can have my neck I like to have a neck like this. I like to be able to pinch it very close to the top so it's free and I can work on it. Yeah. I don't want it down in here. Yeah. And so I'm going to have each of these jaws grooved right up about there. So you're going to take a little bit of the metal off too or just the wood? No, this is a stack of plywood and I took the leather off which came off very easy. I just peeled it off while I was talking to Jeff Howard. Mm -hmm. He has a glue down with super glue. And I think this rough surface of the leather doesn't grip as well as a smooth surface. Yeah. Once, once it's worn in. Well, you put, you put uh, some of that urethane on there that was on the Stumac vise too, right? I haven't done that yet. I need to get a big piece to do that. My only complaint with urethane is on newer guitars, it can bond to the lacquer and pull lacquer off. It seems like it, yeah, sometimes. you got to be, I think whatever people put on their jaws is pretty important. Yeah. There's no perfect thing. The Howard Total, Total Vice jaws on the first one that I got, which is this one, this is the one he first sent. Remember, it doesn't open wide. Yeah. This is black rubber, and it put marks on it somebody's neck yeah it actually went into the lacquer i was able to rub it out i saw it. paul was doing a fret job had something in that vice when it was all done i said what's this all this little black haze all along the neck like, oh i hate that and i we figured out oh it was those jaws well it it rubbed out but mm. so 
you know, this, I'm, I'm taking this apart a bit just to play with it. Yeah. I want a longer screw on the bottom. I know that. And I want these on each end of the handle. Mm -hmm. I want that here, too. I want to be able to grab this easy. And this is the crossover vice. You've seen that. Yeah. That's well, an awful cool thing. Will he send you parts to, to play with? Like, if you want to... Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So you can drill two holes right through... I mean, you can drill into your neck jig right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come through there. You can prop it up to the height you want. Would you Would you drill and tap the, the neck jig? Put like a quarter twenty socket headed cap yeah. screw in there. Absolutely, it looks like I'd probably put a three eight sixteen in that one. Yeah. Yeah, I would just drill light in aluminum and thread it, and then you're you're in tight with this thing. And this one with this vice, I can put a guitar in and hold it horizontal to the floor, right? Yeah, you know, that that vice too, the thing that I, I got to bolt it down because you can also hold the uh, the neck jig like long ways up, you know, like uh -huh. so that standing, it, up. standing up so that it, it takes up less room, you know, you, you're not constantly yeah. hip checking yourself on it. Absolutely. So that's, uh, it's such a mess in here. It's just horrible, man. Yeah. When I get on something like this, it sounds like you're the same way. I go into it and drop everything. Yep. I think here's, here's where I was drilling and reaming out those peg holes yesterday to get a nice clean joint. But look at the mess that follows behind. I got to say, I, I'm i a lot the same way. Like, I just set stuff down and, like, I'm constantly... My, I was yelling about my optivizers. Look at those things. You make those on your lathes downstairs? No, I um, try to get Stu Mac to buy these. These are the most incredible dolls for furniture making. They're uh -huh. stepped. And there's a step to drill bit that goes with it. So when you're joining something together, you have three different diameters. Oh. Incredible. A lot, of, a lot of glue joints. And I just use them around the shop I have them in walnut maple and uh, Stu Mac never bought them but they're killer man so if I want a dowel all I did here was drive it through uh, I don't actually I've never bought a dowel plate like Tim was talking about yeah but I drill holes in this in steel and this one was matched to the drill bit just undersized so that I could ream three eighths plus one. I have reamers that are minus one and plus one. Uh huh. Which makes for a good fit. Yeah. That uh that... But I'm gonna buy one of those uh hole plates just because I've made so many of them over the years it's been just too cheap to buy one. But now I'm buying one. <laughs> well, I didn't even know that wasn't even on my radar to to know to drill a hole in steel to make dowels like that. Just never would have occurred to me. Uh, that must be some like old cabinet maker stuff right there too. Hey Dan, Hello. Are, Dan, our, yeah. our our reception's getting bad, and I got to get to work. Okay, let's go. Hey Dan, thank thank you for uh, thank you for hanging out, man. I'll see. I'll send you a link on those dowels. They're pretty cool. Yes, yeah, send a link. I'll put, it, ones ones. I'll put it in the description of this video, too. Take care, man.